Well, good morning and officially welcome to worship this morning at uh, Mill City Presbyterian. And we have another beautiful day uh, to welcome us. And uh, uh, what a wonderful month we've had. And uh, beginning of summer. So, a uh, holiday weekend, and we're glad so many people are here. Uh, I know a lot of people are traveling this weekend, but we're, we're glad uh, for our regulars, glad to see some visitors, and we're glad to welcome uh, Dr. Uh, Tracy Ray again this morning, his wife Renee. Uh, I kind of missed Stella though. I just <laughs> wish you uh, talked about her ever since her last visit. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can tell us all about her in the service. But welcome. Thanks for, for making the trip up the hill. And uh, just we're just glad to have everybody here today in worship. And, uh, a special weekend, a holiday weekend, and, and just a a time to, th to think about the past and think about all the people that have been important in our lives. So, uh, welcome again. So, um, announcements. Anybody have any announcements this morning they'd like to make? Yes, indeed. Tom and I went to Idaho and Montana last weekend to watch our grandson in his traveling baseball team play. and. We're proud to say they won the championship. Right? <laughs> Good. Uh, yeah, a lot of that going on, and uh, we're anxious to hear all that the San Diego team did. If anybody has heard or seen, uh, I know we had a regional state champion in, in that school. So, uh, what I didn't mention this morning, <coughs> we we're glad to welcome Joanne back at the keyboard and the organ and Phil. It's always glad to have you guys, and looking forward to hearing your music. You know how much we love organ music, and, and you know how much you love to give it to us. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for being here. Any other announcements? I have a quick one since June is right around the corner. Uh, put June 11 on your calendar. The Canyon Community Chorus is going to be putting on a show in Sturz Hall, and the theme is Aloha Spirit. We'll be singing songs from uh, South Pacific and Hawaiian songs. So come dressed in your best Hawaiian wear because there's a prize for the best dressed person in the audience. It's at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday, and there will be Hawaiian appetizers. Oh, good. Oh, that, that should be fun. That should be fun. Raise your hands. Is there a pink cup? What was that? And is there a cost for that? It's donations at the door. <coughs> That's how what we decided. Maybe you should collect afterwards on the map. Any other announcements this morning? Yeah, Diane. I'll make the announcement. Rich can correct the fine fact, fine to um, our grand son took second to state in uh, that shop for. Yes. Wow. Any corrections needed on that, Rich? No, no corrections. <laughs> wow, that's me. That's me. Congratulations. Well. Uh, we're so proud of our kids. Yeah, thanks. We have a couple of uh, volunteer <coughs> days coming up uh, this Friday. We're at, um, we're there for 10 to 2 or 10 to 3, whatever, however long people want. Um, and then the next one is uh, the 16th of June, again from 10 to 2 or 10 to 3 at Gate School for the camp. Yeah, and we'll be getting the camp ready. We have some path work to do that one of the paths is kind of overgrown right now. Just the last few things that need to be done before the campers arrive. So. And they come the end of the month? <laughs> they come, well, we have two small groups coming. Uh, the first two weeks in June, and then the larger group starts coming the last week in June. So we have six weeks of 20 campers a week. So Wow. Yeah, it's very it's exciting. Exciting things yeah. happening this summer. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we would love to have anybody there who can come. So that was this Friday? Yeah. And then the, oh, the 16th, two, two weeks later. Two weeks, yeah. okay. Yeah. So any more details you need to talk about? Yeah. <coughs> Most of you know how to reach me. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, join me in prayer this morning. 
Oh, Lord, thank you for, for, for bringing us together. Thank you for the, the joy of worship, the joy of fellowship, uh, the joy of knowing you and your son, and just the, the joy of, of following him and, and what he has taught us. Just be with us today, be, be with Tracy, and, and just uh, we, we look forward to the, the, your word that you will send to us through him. And just what a, what a glorious weekend to have uh, a chance to worship you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.
join with me in the uh, Apostles' Creed that you find in the insert to your board. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. To be ascended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He is sent in his head, to sit upon the right hand of God, of the Father Almighty. From the hands he shall come to the church of the great and the dead. I believe on the Lord of the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Amen. celebrate and to pray and so what as a congregation are we wanting to share with each other and with God today? Johnny? Yes, Johnny. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for being here today and it's a long weekend, but I have a great praise for Young Life and workers and Elizabeth for for coordinating and <coughs> all the hard work they did yesterday in the park. It's amazing what those kids can do. Uh, they're really working, really worked hard to go to camp, and it's just amazing what um, Young Life has done and, and the guidance they did in this um, small town. It's just a blessing to have them and see them work. And thanks to everybody and everything that keeps them going. So praise Young Life. And, and all the hard work it's, it's fun to see things work out the way they are supposed to, uh, and especially when when it's in your yard and your work that they're doing, in your place that they're making. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's an amazing ministry, and uh, and we're looking forward to a, a wonderful summer with camp and with uh, with kids that are, that are continuing to work uh, here in the camp the community just to make money to, to do this this camping. Yeah, Johnny Wells. You, yep, Johnny. Yep, yep, take um, your time. Larry had his fly off since uh, a couple weeks ago, and um, we got word on Friday that he's uh, right now is cancer free. Everything, he's not all the all the drugs, he's not negative. He has to go back in about three months and recheck it. It can come back, but for right now we're celebrating, and it's it's uh, a great blessing. And have the chance for some of them to turn around and, and not be so depressed. So it's very, very good news. Good. You're full of celebration. That's so cool. Uh, it's a very all, all Yeah. And well, prayers, prayers work. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Salvation has been that I had a safe staff to see my aunt for her 94th birthday. And no incidents along the way anywhere, so I travel. And next week I'm flying out to Texas. My youngest daughter's going to be back here. So, prayers for the safe travel for us when we go back. Yes, you're the travel movement, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, safe travel and enjoy enjoy the trip and, and the, the trip back. That, that should be a, a good time for your daughter. Yeah. Thanks. 
Um, well, first of all, I just want to ask for prayers for my daughter, who is um, due to have her first baby on June 3rd. So um, just prayers that all goes well. And, uh, her name is Hannah. And I want to introduce two of our um, staff, some staff this year. Can you guys stand up so people can see you? Um, this is Masia. Misa. Misa. Uh, pizza. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I yeah. The letters are different in the name than I think they should be. So anyway, tell them a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, as you already know, my name is Misael. You can say pizza. <laughs> yeah. I'm from the Dominican Republic. I've been here for like two weeks. And I'm going to be here until August to 27. I'm going to be working in the camp for the disability people. I'm going to be helping there, serving there. Um, what? That's it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Hi, I'm Angel. I'm from Spain. I'm from Coaching and, and yeah. Mm -hmm. So work those work those folks. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome. Uh, thank thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mine isn't such good news. We have uh, several friends and family that are experiencing. Uh, new bouts of cancer, and uh, Sandy will be going, I think, tomorrow to have a blood work checked on, and then she may go back into cancer, and several other family members are doing well, and others are just receiving the diagnosis, so that makes it a little difficult. So, prayers for those who suffer from cancer. Yeah, extra prayers for those that who don't have as much of a celebration, but uh, they know that we that we're praying for them. Uh, that's got to be uh, uplifting. Curtis, and and to that list, I ask for prayers for Casey Budlong and his family. Um, Casey's going to have surgery on Tuesday, um, and that's for a recurring. Um, cancer, it's going to be a delicate and a serious surgery. So, prayers for the whole family. For Casey and, and that family, uh, tough times. Uh, yeah, uh, we prayed for Molly Bassett in the past and with her cancer, and um, her dad tells us me that um, she's going in, she's to the point. And we hope for healing that she's going in every three months for to check. Um, so she's to that point. Not, not doing chemo right now, but checking. So they're just keeping up a very close eye on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Steve. Um, prayers for Parker and his friends. Next Sunday, they are going to go jump out of a perfectly good airplane and go on their first skydive. <laughs> so, we like prayers that they all land safely. <laughs> I would say that you need prayers for your partner there, too. <laughs> Is this a, like a graduation present? Uh, yes, someone else gave <laughs> Well, he'll 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 be he'll make it over that tall foot mark that morning. <laughs> I have just a celebration. I wanted to share that, um, and I won't go into the detail about the state track meet. But the celebration is that the blessing that these kids have and the camaraderie and friendships that they exhibited during this track season, and it was just so wonderful to see the relationships that have formed over these many years and the support and just the general kindness of this group of kids and uh, that they actually engage with one another and they're not looking at the screens all the time so just a blessing for friendships you know every, every year it's a special senior class 
But this year is, is one uh, very unusual one, and it's, uh, who knows, it may develop into a, a class of 67 or 66 again that's been going on for how many years? A uh, long time. Yeah, so pray that that might happen, but uh, what, what a great bunch of people. It just makes you proud to be, just to be in the same community with that. Uh, the the other one thing we, we need to always remember Memorial Day is is uh, our, our military honorees. Um, you know we Veterans Day is wonderful, but Memorial Day is just a, a special time for most people. But for those who are remembering uh, the veterans, uh, the past and, and and present, and we want to make sure that they are honored this year. Um, the 4th of July theme this year uh, through, through, uh, through the city, through the celebration, the theme this year is going to be freedom is not free. And there again, that, that theme is being carried over to 4th of July, that to honor the, the, the folks who have, who have uh, earned uh, and, and, and paid for our freedom over the years. And so just remember that uh, all the time, especially between now and 4th of July. And, uh, see if we can figure out some way to, to make that a special time for our veterans because uh, they are they are special people. Uh, we'll take take some time now and then for a sign of prayer and to bring before God what, what we just would not willing to, to share publicly. Uh, and then uh, uh, Tracy will, will follow up with, with his pastoral prayer and then we'll move on to his part of the, of the service. <clears throat> Holy God, in our silent time and in our prayer to you, we give thanks for your creation and all the beauty that we witness. You have blessed us in so many ways, Lord, and now we bring to you those petitions from our heart, the deepest concerns that have been on our minds. And Lord, now we pray for those that are in this room, that we would join hearts with them, that you would unite us, that today would be a day of celebration of your goodness to us, your love to us. And we recognize that you have taught us how to pray with the Lord's Prayer. And so we join together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
grateful, full of hearts of, of joy and thanksgiving for the uh, freedom that we have to worship and the, the price that has been paid throughout the centuries for us to be in this place at this time. We're grateful, Lord, and we ask your blessing on it. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs> pre-seminary in my college years and I was working in the United uh, United Methodist Church. It was called the Cathedral of the Rockies and it's a pretty glorious place with lots of stained glass windows and I would go and I would go in the back of the sanctuary and uh, up in the back I would be all alone. The place would be empty but then the organist would come in and they had this huge pipe organ and it was just majestic. 
And I can honestly say today it reminded me of that. That was a beautiful plan. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Well, our, our word from the Lord today, our epistle lesson, is from Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 12, 3b-13. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given um, through the Spirit the utterances of wisdom, to another the utterances of knowledge according to that same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy and the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to a, another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and, and the same Spirit, who allotted to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all its members are of the body, though many, but are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews, Greeks, slaves, or free, and we were made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. It is good to be back here again. I enjoy your presence, and um, I hope by the end of today you can say the same about me. We'll see. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm not trying to be rude, but I do have uh, a pretty windy voice, and so I have <coughs> liquid here. So if I start getting uh, froggy sounding, um, that's, you know, I'm just so dang self-conscious. You know, it, even on the way here, I, I feel like my throat gets kind of clogged up. And it's like I'm anxious about the word of the Lord. And I hate the sound of my own voice. I really do. And I hate the way that I deliver. So I, on my way here, you may, um, I was just praying, God, let us hear you today and not me. So, when I go through the, what God has laid on my heart, I want you to know that, that I truly believe that we are gathering in the name of Jesus Christ, and that it's through His Holy Spirit that we are united when we worship. Today is Pentecost Sunday and Memorial Day weekend. This is an excellent time to reflect on the essentials of our faith. We'll look at the core beliefs that unite us to Christians around the world, regardless of denomination and practice. We'll also examine how to implement our essential faith in our daily life. It is my hope that today we will be reminded of what unites us in spirit and why that is far more important than theological distinctions. That's, that's a bold statement. But I truly believe that in our being united by spirit, that that is the most important thing we can do right here and right now. Our scripture lesson for this sermon is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and then I'll be reading verse 41 as well. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and tongues rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. I was careful in preparing today's service uh, to use your book of confessions for the Presbyterian USA denomination. And I'm, I'm wanting to let you know that even though um, I'm an outsider to your group, that I'm trying to stay close to your traditions, because this to me is one of the most volatile passages in Scripture. 
It is so divisive for a lot of people. But Pentecost Sunday is recognized in Christianity 50 days after Easter. It occurred during the Jewish festival called the Feast of Weeks. This was a time when adult uh, Jewish males would gather from countries everywhere to celebrate the giving of the law to Moses and the Passover. So what we have is old time religion with something new coming into play. The Old Testament had the law. The New Testament celebrates the new law written on the hearts of God's people. It's a crazy supernatural event with a singular purpose. Throughout the history of Christianity, people have wrestled to understand the, de the depth of meaning to this mysterious event. They have tried to own it and reproduce it, and even denominations have been built up around it. The charismatic practice of the 20th, the 20th century revivalism gave birth to the term Pentecostalism. So honestly, seeing how Christians react to this event at Pentecost seems extremely divisive. The imagery of wind, fire, and tongues, along with people from various places hearing things in their own language, is kind of bizarre. Scripture indicates that people at the time were kind of wigged out too. There are natural events, and then there are supernatural events that are over and above what is normal. Pentecost was not normal. It was not a normal event. And as a theologian, I could spend a lot of time trying to dissect and analyze all the imagery. But as I said, this event occurred with a singular purpose, and that was to proclaim the gospel message of Jesus Christ. It was a message that lives could be transformed, wiped clean, and sanctified as new creations living with the Holy Spirit within them. Pentecost is less about how things were done and more about what was actually accomplished. God was not giving us a practice or a procedure. He was giving us salvation through his Son. So what is essential to our faith? I may not be able to understand mysterious events, but I can understand the concept of receiving the word. It's the utterances of God made intelligible only through His Holy Spirit. This past April, my wife and I have traveled to Japan, and languages in different countries can be a problem whenever we travel. But however, in, in this case, the barrier of language was resolved with technology. Right through the custom gates, the custom officers were able to hold up a cell phone translation device, and it and it transformed our words into Japanese and their words into English. So we were able to get right through customs. And then we were able to use a translation app on our phone to help us with hotels, trains, and even shopping. So you probably get where I'm going with this. The Holy Spirit is our translation channel to communicate in the language that only God can speak. There are movements to the translation of God's word to us. First is receiving the word, which leads to repentance, a turning away from our way, our own way, and turning to God's way. The second is baptism and being raised. It's, it's the act, or it's an outward sign of an inward act um, of grace that signifies dying to self and being raised again in a new, as a new creation. The third is the transformation power of the Holy Spirit that enables us to live the new life of walking with God. So what happened with, at Pentecost was that around 3,000 souls or people were saved and they were transformed by the word that they received. The book of Acts makes it clear that not everyone there that day received the word. Some people thought that the disciples were drunk out of their minds. The disciples were not preaching to satisfy the uh, satisfaction of people. They were preaching to the hearts and souls of those who were there. And this is an important concept to our faith. It is essential to our faith that we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us and through us. And Lord knows I want that to happen today. <laughs> 
we do not need to lure people into the church because of our, the benefits of the church or its social activities. We simply need to share what's on our heart. When we allow the Holy Spirit to speak and to use us, we see that there is only one gospel with many voices. God can use your life just where you are as you interact with hurting people to share the message of hope. This is why our epistle lesson today says, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. He is the one who uses our unique gifts for the singular purpose of sharing God's love. The core of our belief that unites us as Christians around the world is that salvation comes through Jesus Christ. Jesus says in John 15, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. <coughs> At the end of Acts chapter 2, it describes all the believers gathered together, having all things in common. And if we were able to fit everybody in into one car, you know what car that would be? It would be a Honda, because then we'd all be in one accord. <laughs> I apologize. I'm just too much of a, I know. My wife says I get kind of intense and that I need to bring some brevity to my service. <laughs> so look, at some... Acts chapter 2 is interesting because remember, those that were uh, there that day were made up of people from different areas and countries with different languages and customs. A lot of them were devout followers of the Jewish religion. The law of Moses was the answer to everything. So letting go of those things that we think is absolutely right is difficult. More so, being open-minded to embrace something new requires a <coughs> aha moment. Now think in circumstances of our nation and where we stand today. It's a hard thing to let go of those things that we think are absolutely right and to open up to something that requires an aha moment. This is what was happening in their day. It had to be a major shift for people who saw themselves as righteous to now understand that Christ alone was the new rule for their hearts with the new law. So they're, they're having to change their way of thinking in, in so many regards to embrace something new, something radical. Sometimes our differences speak louder than our core beliefs. When this happens, there's a breakdown in communication with the Holy Spirit. It seems unavoidable in today's Christianity. We insist on focusing on our distinct differences. My last church membership was with the Presbyterian USA Church. That's what this church is, correct? And as a growing, vibrant church, they bought an elite golf course with banquet facilities, ballroom facilities, uh, and even a restaurant. The place was so fancy and so impressive that even President Obama came there to golf. Secret Service and all, they were all there. The motivation for them to buy that or to purchase that property for the church was that they needed the parking space. They used the facility well and they experienced significant growth. Now my family and I, we moved right in the middle of their transition out of the Presbyterian USA denomination. I don't know all the politics that were involved, but I know the focus was on the distinct differences. They decided to go a different way. Theological diversity surrounds us, but God does not change. He is not divided. And far more is accomplished when the Holy Spirit is allowed to speak in unity. So let's be clear. The role of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Christ. The Holy Spirit came in the most inclusive way to address the human condition to provide transformation. Remember, they're having to trans transform from the self-righteous legalistic practices to something new, the law of the heart. We see in Acts the evidence of the inner presence of the Holy Spirit by the outward evidence of unity that was displayed by the new believers. 
They not only had all things in common, but actually as they shared with anyone who had need. So as we work out our faith, let's evaluate, are we working to be inclusive or exclusive with the gospel message? Theology, doctrine, and religious practice have to conform to our central core belief. Salvation and transformation come through Christ. God is emphatically deliberate with signs and wonders that he wants to change your life and give you a new direction that leads to hope. Now, with the new eyes of Christ, we actually see the real needs of people. We share with people not to be a social worker or to lift them out of poverty. We share with the intentional objective of revealing Christ. For a time, I worked for the Salvation Army as a case manager. I was even fortunate enough to provide pulpit supply for them as well. The Salvation Army is known for its generosity to the poor. As this denomination has expanded, they try to do more good for more people. And nowadays, they receive very large grants from the United Way, McDonald's, and, and many others. With every grant comes stipulations on how the funds are to be used. So what I've discovered with institutions like this is that the mission and purpose are easily lost meeting goals and following uh, requirements in order to keep grants flowing, that becomes the priority. So good intentions on our terms is not good enough. With organization and structure, we risk sacrificing the integrity of sincere hearts. Acts chapter 2, verse 46 says, With one accord, there we go with that Honda again, they continued to meet daily in the temple courts and break bread from house to house, sharing their meals with gladness and sincerity of heart. Sincerity of heart stands out to me. This is staying on point. It's not doing works to meet a quota, uh, good works. It's living life with a directional path that leads to Christ. Everything that I do seems to flow towards Christ. Then people will pick up on that. But I have to admit that sometimes I feel like my life is ineffectual. I don't always realize the impact that I have on other people. It's kind of like that saying, uh, a watch pot never boils. Well, the truth is water will boil un eventually under a flame. There is a breaking point where the still water turns bubbly. The flame of the Holy Spirit is that what helps people break through that, those still waters into a bubbly faith. It will boil even if we don't always recognize it. In our daily life, if we are operating with sincere hearts, then people will discover that Christ is working in us through the Holy Spirit. So let's focus on our core values and live our essential faith. It will become evident to people that their deepest need to live a transformed life is possible. We may not see fantastic or miraculous or supernatural or even thousands of people being saved, but God has made it clear that He loves you and through you He can love other people. You know, I, uh, I went through that a lot faster than I thought I would. But I hope you get what I'm trying to say. A passion of my heart is, and I have, I have experience with a lot of denominations. I love this denomination. I love how it operates. And I love the passion of people that I've seen that they have for Christ in his kingdom. And I want to say with, with some surety that you're not alone. That God, God knows what you're doing. God loves you and that he is with you. And thanks be to God, he, contend, he intends on staying that way. Um, there's a closing hymn, number 444. I love to tell the story. <laughs>
receive this benediction. May God clear your path to proclaim Christ profoundly and miraculously. May his grace pour from your lips and be revealed in your deeds. Peace is yours.